God bless you and welcome to Ask the Pastor. I'm your host today, Brandon Hollis. This is the day that the Lord has made and we are already rejoicing because we're glad in it. Yes, we're glad that our founders, Dr. Garth and Tina Kuntz, 44 years, they have been committed to this ministry and that's why we're able to come to you today live. Oh yes, that's right. We are live today. That's right. As you're listening and watching me right now, you can type those questions, ask those questions, those concerns about the Bible, Jesus, church, where we are today in the world. We've got the answers because we're going to go to the Word of God. All you have to do is email us at ask at tct.tv. I want to remind you that we're also live on YouTube. That's right. All you have to do is type your questions right there in the comment section, and we'll answer and receive those just the same. I'm not by myself today. I'm surrounded by amazing pastors that are more than capable of answering your questions according to the Word of God. Today I've got with me Dr. Kathleen Whoopio. Living Through Him Ministries and Fellowship, Sterling Heights, Michigan. Pastor David Gray, First Baptist Church of Garrettsville in Garrettsville, Ohio. Pastor Mark Columbus, Awakening Church, Aurora, Ohio. Pastor Artie Casimus, Word Alive Bible Church in Norwalk, Connecticut. And Pastor Charles E. Redmond, Jr., New Journey Church in Garfield Heights, Ohio. Ladies and gentlemen, we're off to a great start already as we go to the first question from Willie in Texas. His question is this, why are some preachers not preaching about the kingdom of God? I like this question already, Dr. Kathleen. What do you have to say to Willie? That's a good one, Willie. Thank you so much for calling that in. You know, I was thinking about the kingdom of God, and you can't really see it unless you're born again, and then you understand the word of God. But I want to read you a scripture out of Romans chapter 14, and I want to look at verse uh, 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat or drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. For he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. And it says, let us follow after the things which make for peace, things whereby we may edify one another. We need to build one another up. And the kingdom of God is within us when we have Jesus Christ in us. It's a simple question. And then, of course, once you have Jesus Christ, hmm. you're living in the kingdom. But the question is, is why are some pastors not preaching it? I don't really know all what other pastors are preaching, and I can't say. You know, sometimes you see on TV a pastor has a bent towards a certain area, but they may be preaching the full gospel. I don't know. And so I know at our fellowship and our meetings, we do preach the full gospel of God. So I don't know what others are doing, Willie, but I hope that helped you. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Pastor David, we're talking about preachers not preaching about the kingdom of God. What do you have to say to this question? I'm always leery of trying to answer questions about what other preachers are or not or are not doing, uh, because that assumes that we understand all of the time they've spent in discipling people, they spent with people. We can't go by listening to one of their sermons or even a series of their sermons and assume that is the whole of their ministry. It is clear that we are to preach the kingdom. In uh, Matthew 4, it says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so we know that the kingdom of heaven is with us. We know that if we are born again, we are a part of that kingdom. And so the kingdom is everywhere that we go. So someone that is preaching all the full counsel of God is in essence, preaching the kingdom of God. Wow. Thank you for that. And, and, and I like the way you said that. It's, it's hard to really judge based upon one sermon or even a series of sermons that they're not preaching the kingdom of God. You may have tuned in to while they're right where God has them at that very moment. So I like the way you said that. Pastor Mark, Willie is concerned. He said, we're, we're in a time where somebody needs to be preaching about the kingdom of God. Well, I'd what like to say? start preaching right now, but we got 90 <laughs> seconds to answer this and, and the pastor, so far, we've done a great job. You're going to hear some more. But, you know, we don't want to focus in on what pastors or preachers are preaching or not preaching. I believe that we are led by the Holy Spirit to bring forth, whether they be serious. There's all kinds of different styles of preaching. However, and, and pastor here said it, if they're in the Word of God, 
Right. If they're preaching the full counsel, they are preaching the kingdom of God. Uh, so we're not directing this so much to the preachers today, but to you, Willie, and we want to thank you for that question. Um, here's what this says in Acts 20, verse 27. And talking about the preachers and how we approach uh, bringing forth through the Holy Spirit the word of God. For I have not hesitated to proclaim to you the whole will or counsel of God. Mm. Keep watch over yourself. So you've got a part to play in this, Willie. And all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Uh, be shepherds of the church of God which he brought you, bought you with his own blood. This is, and we're going, we're in Holy Week. Today's, you know, a, a, a holy day yes. as we are in that Holy Week, yes. uh, Monday, you know, Thursday, and there's a time right now of things that should be really drawing us to the cross of Jesus Christ. If we, were you, and if you don't feel like you are being fulfilled where you're at, go and sit down with your pastor. Find out that you're asking us, uh, but I know this, Jesus came in Luke 4, and he says he came to preach the word of God. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're here to do. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So go seek that kingdom, Willie. I, I've got a message out of something you said, Pastor Mark. You've got a part to play in this. Woo! I might preach that Sunday for Easter. That's good right there. Uh, Pastor Artie, Willie's question, why are some preachers not preaching about the kingdom of God? What do you have to say? Yeah, it's an interesting question because you really have to decide what is your, your definition of the kingdom of God. Because Jesus does make distinction between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. In, Levi in Luke 17, 21, he says the kingdom of God is within you. Matthew 6, 33, as he just uh, mentioned, he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. But in Matthew 13, Jesus talks about the kingdom parables. And in there, he says the kingdom of heaven is like. He doesn't men mention the kingdom of God. So we know from reading the kingdom parables in Matthew 13 that the kingdom of heaven is specific to salvation. So to me, the kingdom of God is everything else. And if the kingdom of God is within you, when you have Jesus, when you have the Holy Spirit in you, you have everything, everything that God is, everything that is available to us in heaven. I mean, God just downloaded everything when you received Christ. So that to me is the kingdom of God. So when you say, uh, are they all pre why aren't they preaching the kingdom of God? I think we all agree that if they're preaching the word, they're preaching the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Some may specialize on grace. Some may specialize on faith. Uh, evangelists specialize on salvation. Right. It's all the kingdom of God. Um, so I, I would have to say that a lot of them are preaching the kingdom of God, but in their own special way. I like that. I like that, Pastor Artie. Thank you so much for that. And finally, Pastor Charles, your final thoughts on this. Why are some preachers not preaching about the kingdom of God? I agree with the panelists. I mean, it's very difficult to judge, if you will. Uh, and you've got to be very careful not to judge. But I think also there's something to be said as well about false teachers and false prophets. The scripture says in 1 John 4, uh, 1 through 3, it says, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirit to see whether they are of God, because many false prophets have come into the world. And then this, it goes on to say that you can recognize it by the, who, you know, if the spirit of God is there, that every spirit that acknowledges Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But when they don't, they're not from God. There's a spirit of Antichrist, which has entered into the world. So we have to be, uh, uh, again, we have a part to play. The part we play is to know the word of God, to know what the Bible says, to know what the scripture declares, and to also not necessarily judge, but maybe pray for those people who, who we see are uh, maybe drifting off or the case, whatever the case may be, but also to make sure that we are playing our part, knowing the word of God and praying for, for those people and not just you know, writing them off and assuming that, oh, they just are false or anything like that. So. I like that, and I like the conclusion of your uh, statement, too, praying for those people. There may be some people that are not preaching the kingdom of God. There, it could be, and uh, I believe that our, our part to play in that even then is to pray for them. So thank you so much for that question, Willie. I hope you've got some uh, insight there. Benji is in New York and asked this question, did Adam and Eve ever repent and receive salvation? Pastor David. The Bible doesn't clearly state whether or not Adam and Eve repent, at least in the way that we are aware of repentance. But you can see that in by Genesis 4, that there are um, sacrifices happening there. That, and those sacrifices seem to suggest that they were following after the Lord at that point. And we know that in the Old Testament, they are looking 
forward to Christ as we are in the New Testament looking back toward Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, but everyone has to be looking toward Christ for them to uh, know uh, salvation. So the, the answer is, is not clearly stated in Scripture whether or not they... Um, actually repented in any way that we would be familiar with. Okay. Thank you for that. Pastor Mark, what do you have to say? Good question. Um, great answer so far. We're going to hear a lot of different things here. Um, did Adam and Eve repent uh, and receive salvation? I don't believe uh, at the time of Adam and Eve, as they were created, Adam's created, uh, Eve is brought out of the rib. There's some things that are happening here. Listen, we're talking about pre law of Moses. We're going all the way back to the very beginning before it even rained. They never even saw rain. So this is entirely different as you look at what Adam and Eve had to do. And, you know, the word metanoia, which is repentance, is changing of the mind, turning away from your sin, recognizing the guilt and shame of that sin. Uh, they did not, they had never sinned before. They didn't even know what that was. And so, you know, then you move into Cain and Abel and Cain killing his brother. And, and all this stuff was coming because the serpent had come in corrupted. Uh, the authority that God had given Adam. So when you start to wonder if Adam and Eve repented, and I, I like what Pastor said, they didn't repent as we would have repented. Understand that the first sacrifice for that sin would have been God taking out the animals to create a clothing for them because they found out they were naked and the sin uh, pulled these, these, uh, this, the good and the evil now represented in sin. And so, you know, when we move forward to this, you know, and I, I just wanted to go over here to Romans 3, and we'll pass this on. Uh, starting in verse 25, it says, God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement. Now, there was bulls and goats and sheep that came in under the law uh, for the atonement of sin, uh, the payment of sin through the shedding of the blood to be received by faith. He did this to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. Jesus even paid for the sins, past, present, and future. As we look back to Adam and Eve, we recognize whatever their sacrifice, listen, if they could have changed their mind prior to sin, we wouldn't be sitting here on Ask the Pastor today, and we wouldn't have these questions. But we do, there is sin, we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so we look back to Adam and Eve, I believe that they will be in heaven with us, I believe that because of uh, the dynamics that existed at the beginning, played out through Jesus Christ, he took care of that after the cross. Wow, wow. Thank you, Jesus, for that. Pastor Artie, what do you have to say to this question? Uh, well, to be real specific, they could not receive salvation until Jesus came. Right. So <laughs> they looked forward to the cross as we look back to the cross. Now, we know, we know they knew God because in Genesis chapter 3, verse 8, it says, And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, so I like to say that God's a cool God, right? Because he only comes down in air conditioning and, mm -hmm. you know, anyway. Uh, so he's a, he's, he came down in the cool of the day to speak with Adam and Eve. And we get the sense that he did that frequently. So they knew God. And then in Genesis chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Mm -hmm. So again, she acknowledges God, the existence of God. So they knew God. And, and, and I believe that when they did die, they were in Abraham's bosom, as we call it. And when Jesus went down into hell and he preached to the captives, he's, he brought them up with him when he was raised from the dead. So, I mean, I can speculate and say, yes, they're saved, but I don't see how they did not know Christ from what we see in Scripture because they continue to acknowledge him. That's right. That's right. Wow. Thank you for that. Pastor Charles, jump in on this. Did Adam and Eve ever repent and receive salvation? Well, hey, the panelists are doing an excellent job explaining this. Uh, I think that is no clear evidence as, as, as be, has been established here. Um, but what I like about the question and what I like about what took place in Genesis 3, where he covered himself and, and God confronted him. And, you know, he said, who told you you were naked? You know what I mean? He never you know, had that from there. It's a reminder to us not to cover our sin. And so the importance of... of of, of repenting and acknowledging where we are. I like uh, Proverbs 23, 28, 13. It says, whoever hides his sin or conceals his sins will not progress, will not prosper. Right. 
uh, but he who confesses his sin and renounces his sin, then they will have full mercy. It's a blessing, amen, uh, according to uh, Psalm 32 and 1. Uh, blessed is the man whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. It's important. What are our sins covered by? Are our sins covered by our attempts to hide them, to justify them, or are our sins covered by the blood of Jesus? And we want to be sure that our sins are covered by the blood of Jesus. Wow, thank you for that. And while you're watching today, somebody needs to, while you've got breath still in your body, just renounce that sin, just forsake that sin, just turn away from that sin. And I believe God is going to do something so special for you. Dr. Kathleen, what do you have to say to this question? Did Adam and Eve ever repent and receive salvation? This question from Benji. Benji, thank you so much for that question. And all of these pastors, it's just been wonderful listening to them. I want to read a scripture, a little bit different one out of Romans. And verse 4, it says, Oh, despisest thou the riches of his goodness. Mm. He's always been good. And forbearance and the longsuffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. And I also was thinking about Jesus. You know, Jesus was at the beginning. He was at the end. He's coming again. He set the captives free. He went and preached to the captives. And so, as you were saying, before the cross, we're looking uh, after the cross, we're looking to him. Jesus is there. You know, it says even the very nature speaks of God. All the things in the garden that God, I believe they had the opportunity. But you know what? The most important thing is God had a plan. Mm -hmm. He knew that was going to happen. And I think the most important thing, and I'm very evangelistic, <laughs> is to know that God had a plan to save your soul. He knew they would fall. They would listen to that old serpent. And I just want to encourage you, give your heart to Jesus in this wonderful time of resurrection Sunday coming up. <laughs> give your life to the Hallelujah. Lord and you won't have to be concerned about Adam and Eve and what they did because God had a plan. Ooh, I like that. God does have a plan and I'm certainly glad that he has a plan for you. Well, Gregory's on YouTube. He's got a question that we'll deal with right when we come back from this small break. Did you know TCT has a brand new app? That's right. You now have access to Christian television with one simple click. Watch TCT's exclusive live stream and on-demand programming. Cast to your smart TV. Share episodes with your friends. Never miss a moment of your favorite programs with pause and rewind. Enjoy TCT on all your favorite devices, whether at home or on the go. And just for signing up and downloading the new TCT app, we'll send you a great gift absolutely free. Selection will vary and supplies are limited, so don't wait another minute. Go to tct.tv, ways to watch, apps and devices to get started. Download the new TCT app today. You ask the questions and we provide the answers. On Ask the Pastor, we minister the Word of God as we receive your inquiries. It takes a great deal of time, effort, and finances to produce this quality Christian programming. Our production team at TCT works hard behind the scenes to produce these highly enriched programs. When you support TCT, we can continue to provide biblical Christian guidance to our viewers. Jim from Florida calls in with this question. What are some Bible verses that can help with depression? Your support can make a difference in the lives of many. Go to our website at tct.tv or call us at 1-800-232-9855. And you can text to give by sending TCT to 56512. Also, you can mail a contribution to P.O. Box 1010, Marion, Illinois, 62959. Thank you for partnering with TCT and Ask the Pastor. So many of you for over 44 years have been a blessing to this network because you realize that this is ministry. And you said, I've got to be a part of getting the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. And that's what TCT does. And we do that with your help. And some of you are new to TCT and you're saying, well, I want to jump in on that. I want to get my seat in the ground. Give us a call at 800-232-9855. Of course, you can mail us at P.O. Box 1010, Marion, Illinois, 62959. If you go to our website, all the information is on there, tct.tv. That's a secure site where you can give as well. And also you can pull out your cell phone and text a love gift. That's right. Text the letters TCT 
to 56512. And those of you that are just tuning in, yes, we're live today. We are answering your questions and we are doing a tremendous job because we're heading into the word of God. That's right. These pastors are not answering out of their own intellect. They're going straight to the word of God. Get those questions into us. Ask at tct.tv. That's the email. And of course, you can do what they're doing on YouTube right now. You can type those questions in the comment section and we'll receive them just like we did for Gregory. He's on YouTube watching right now. Hi, Gary. And he said, is it wrong for Christians to smoke cigarettes? And where in the Bible does it talk about this? Pastor Mark. Well, there's a lot of, you know, that's a really good question. And I want to answer from two different aspects. One's a physical aspect and one's a spiritual aspect. And I think that's what you're looking for right there. You know, it says here in, you know, talk about the health issues. Anybody smoking, read the side of the pack of your, of your cigarettes. It says it will cause cancer. I'm not making claims, health claims or any other kind of claims other than what it professes to say there. And why you would bring that into your body is another story. But here's what it says in 1 Corinthians 6, um, 19 through 20. And I'm just going to read this. Do you not know, now you're a Christian, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought with a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. So we have to ask this question. By taking in um, an addictive behavior of nicotine and the other car carcinogens that are in the smoke that you're putting into the temple because we're told not to defile this temple. Now, I know that we may sin. We may be addictive. There's an addictive aspect to this when we talk about the physical nature and the codependent aspect of smoking. Uh, you can be delivered from that. You, there's ways to quit smoking as well. But I believe as you, you're framing this question around, is it okay? Listen, uh, we are not to be dependent on anything but Jesus Christ. That's right. By the power of the Holy Spirit, something has power over you and this temple other than Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Hello. So I I'm praying deliverance right now in the name of Jesus that God will give you strength uh, and that addiction will be removed from your mouth, from your system in Jesus' name. And you'll be totally dependent on Holy Spirit. I and Jesus Christ. I believe that by faith. Thank you, Pastor Mark. Pastor Artie, is it wrong for Christians to smoke cigarettes? And where in the Bible does it talk about this? So I completely agree with Pastor Mark. Um, it's, it is wrong for Christians to smoke cigarettes. And I was going to use the same scriptures in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. And so I would ask you, the, this question is, how do you want to treat God's temple? And you know, in the Old Testament, when they treated his temple wrong, it, it, God was not very happy. Uh, in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 9, Paul says this in verse 27. He said, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. He's basically saying this. He wasn't going to allow things to control him. And so I would tell you that if you allow this to control you, if you don't master it, it'll master you and it will take over your life. Now, the next question has to be, uh, will I go to hell if I smoke cigarettes? And absolutely not. We know the only uh, reason to go into hell is not accepting Jesus Christ. Um, so you're not going to go to hell, but you're going to smell like smoke while you're here. So I, I, highly, I highly agree with my brother here is uh, seek deliverance. Put that thing down. Put your body under. When it tells you that you need a cigarette, just tell your body no. Because eventually you can become disqualified from the race. And we don't want you to do that. We want everybody to go to heaven with us. I like that. Pastor Artie, I heard something. Put that thing down and pick Jesus up. Ooh, I like that right there. Holly. Now, see, I'm, I'm not going to give you guys any credit when I preach any of this stuff, okay? I just want you to know right now. Pastor Charles, what do you have to say to Gregory's question? Well, I'll be careful what I say because I don't want to be, <laughs> you know, but no, I'm just, just joking. But no, this, I mean, wow. What, a, what great answers is, again, I was going to, same thing, 1 Corinthians 6, our bodies, our temples, how we're going to treat our temple. Um, I also will bring out Romans 12 and, and 2, uh, that we don't want to conform to this world, but we want to be transformed by the renewing of Hallelujah. our minds. And so it's difficult to be renewed you know, by our minds or we allow substance to control our minds or we depend upon a substance. Some people smoke because it just calms me down and brings me peace. Well, Jesus is our peace. You know, he's the Prince of Hallelujah. Peace. And so we need to rely upon the Lord for some of the certain things that we claim to rely on cigarettes for. Um, 
Also, I mean, j just just put off my pastor hat for just a 30 seconds. Health issues, what it's doing to your lungs. The government put a warning on it. I mean, goodness gracious, logically, without even being spiritual or being a pastor, just logically, it just it's just difficult to to wrap your mind around it being a good thing for you. So yeah, I absolutely say no, 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 no. Thank you, thank you for that clarity, Dr. Kathleen. What do you have to say? Thank you. You know, I my mother, she was my adopted mother. She smoked until she couldn't smoke anymore. And I got to tell you, when she died, it was an awful death to watch her screaming in the middle of the night, help me, help me, help me to my husband and I. And we tried. We had to get the morphine. She was in hospice in our home and run with the breathing machine. The hurry, hurry, hurry was always a big rush. And it was sad. It was really sad because of the smoking. She received Jesus at the end. Praise God, as we were talking about. And I would go to the same scripture. Your body is a temple. But this goes for any addiction whatsoever. Jesus is the chain breaker, isn't he? Hallelujah. He breaks those chains. So sometimes, you know, the Christian comes in and they're like the little fish. You know, we bring them in and then we've got to see them get cleaned up. So they come in with all these habits and they're welcome, right? But Jesus and the Holy Spirit will start convicting them and he will help them. He will break those addictions. He said that there, the Spirit of the Lord is there is liberty. And so he will break those addictions. So I just want to encourage you, you know, uh, ask the Lord. He's faithful and he will set you free if you're struggling with that. Hallelujah. I like what you said. Jesus is the chain breaker. Pastor David, your final thoughts on Gregory's question. Is it wrong for Christians to smoke cigarettes? And where in the Bible does it talk about this? I, I think that it is a mistake to get hooked on any substance whatsoever. Nicotine is a, an addictive substance and one that doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. But let me end this little question with a, a thought about how do we approach those who are doing something that we don't think is a particularly good idea. Uh, chapter 14 of Romans says, him that is weak in the faith receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. In other words, listen, don't spend all your time arguing with smokers. Just you know, they can't do it in your house. Uh, for one believeth that he may eat all things, another who is weak eateth herbs. Let him not that eateth despise him that eateth not, and let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth, for God hath received him. Wow. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? We know that cigarettes are not good for you. Uh, that's a, a proven medical fact, and and uh, we can tell that. But but it's not my job to judge you. My job is to introduce you to Jesus. And when you know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I believe the Spirit of God will begin to convict you of the things that will keep you from being an effective servant of His. Wow. Thank you so much for that, Gregory. I think you've receive a wealth of information there from the pastors, and I hope that helps you along your journey. Well, they're still on YouTube asking questions. Tainel is on there and said, please explain Genesis chapter 24, 2 through 9. What is the meaning behind this oath? Pastor Artie. So uh, there's a lot of old or ancient uh, customs um, that come from cultures. Uh, one of the things we see is Jonathan and David, right? They became blood brothers, and they literally cut their palms and shook on it. They became, they, they swapped blood. Um, when I was a kid, when I was a blood brother with a, a friend, we just did our pinkies. We did one of these. <laughs> so the customs kind of changed. So to me, this is more of, an, of a custom, an ancient custom, because he said, put your hand under my thigh. It's like, here, let's shake on this. You promise me that you're going to go and get my, my, my son a wife from my country. So it's more of a promise of, of an oath. Okay, thank you for that. Pastor Charles. Yeah, exactly, exactly right. Uh, it's, it's, it's handshake, a contract, if you will, something to agree, uh, some sort of agreement uh, that was made. Um, it was very important for, for uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the, the father and the son to make sure that, the father for the son to make sure that he didn't marry just anybody. Uh, even Second uh, Corinthians 6.14, can we be unequally yoked? It's important not to just, you know, 
uh, marry anybody. You got to be very, very careful and critical about uh, spouse selection and those types of things. So this is basically, in a sense, without going, you know, into Bible study mode, uh, the, the, the sense of this text here. Okay. Thank you for that. Dr. Kathleen, please explain Genesis chapter 24, verses 2 through 9. What is the meaning behind this oath? Okay, let's read that. And Abraham was old, well stricken in age, and the Lord blessed Abraham in all things. Mm. And Abraham said to his eldest servant of his house that ruled over all that he had, put, I pray thee, thy hand under thy thigh. And we need to really go on to the next verse. And I will make thee swear by the Lord. And as we talked about, you know, sometimes you're in court, they want you to swear on a Bible. I mean, handshake, as you all had mentioned, different uh, aspects. And um, he says that thou shall not take a wife unto thy son of the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell. And, you know, there's a culture, it's, it's like a holy line, preserving the holy line. Uh, God led them even back in those days. And I just want to give you a quick example because I'm a storyteller. But um, Lester Sumrall himself had ordained me uh, before he died. And the Lord had worked that out just in that way. But I wasn't going to stick with the ministry. And I decided to let it go. And it was like four months into it, I didn't renew my license that year, and I had a dream. And a man came to me in a dream, and he said, um, you need to renew your license. And I said to him, why? And the man said, because of the legacy. Wow. You see, it's very mm. important. And I want to encourage you, bloom where you're planted. Don't be seeking anything out. God will bring to you. And so here we are. We're keeping this line pure. It's a sacred oath to do God's will. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Pastor David. One of the things that we need to look at when looking at this scripture is the uh, legacy as has been mentioned and, and the part of the culture has been mentioned, but also what he didn't want him to do was to have any doings with uh, the women of the, that particular culture because that would sway them from following Jehovah. They didn't want them to be pulled away, didn't want him to be pulled away from following after God. He wanted to, as someone had said, preserve the line. He wanted to make sure that uh, the that there would be a godly people. And since it was so important for that to happen, he made sure that he would not be tainted by having someone who might uh, pull him away day by day, wanting to worship in another way. Wow, thank you for that history. Pastor Mark, your final thoughts on this question? This, this is a good question, and the pastor's done a great job. You know, as I read this, and I want to thank Pastor Kathy for, you know, bringing this out and bringing that word out. Um, we've looked at the physical aspect of the time that this was done, and we understand that putting a hand under the thigh was about an agreement or a covenant. Now, understanding that the Old Testament is a type and shadow of what's to come. Well, you know, we recognize that uh, God is a covenant keeping God. He, he made a covenant with Abraham, uh, Isaac, and then Jacob through the promise. You know, we, we, we understand all that. But let's go all the way into the New Testament now where we have a covenant uh, with Jesus Christ who shed his blood on the cross. And he uh, redeemed us with that blood. There's a blood covenant uh, that we have as Christians, that the, those who believe with Jesus Christ. And I, I, I believe that right here and there, that we, we are, if we had to put our hand under the thigh, uh, I think it's more uh, of giving a yes be yes or no be no. We said yes to Jesus, now we're to walk a certain way. We're to walk out our salvation in fear and trembling. And so it's a matter of, we see this, it's a matter of covenant. And so we're, as God kept his word, we have to keep ours. I believe this goes into the type and shadow of what we see here with Abraham, who's the father of faith. It was justified to him. Uh, uh, he was justified through his faith. We're justified by the blood of Jesus. And that, that without the remission of sin or blood, there is no remission of sin. Ooh, hallelujah, hallelujah. So many times we put all of these demands and this pressure on God about him keeping his commitment, but we sway sometimes from keeping our commitment. Thank you for that, Pastor Mark. I like that, and I hope that helped you. And uh, we're moving right along, going down now to North Carolina. Sabrina is down there asking the question, if you have sinned after accepting Christ, can you be saved again? If you have sinned after accepting Christ, can you be saved again, Pastor Charles? Wow, what a good, what a good question. Um, it's, it's, um, 
probably on the minds of many. But what I love about the scripture um, is First John chapter one nine. It says, "If you confess your sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness." What a blessing it is to know that. Um, like they said earlier, past, present, future, he, he died for us and, and gave us an uh, uh, opportunity to, to be cleansed from our sins, to be, to be back in the, the grace of God. He's, even when we are unfaithful, he is faithful and he's just. If we draw not to God, he will draw not to us. And so it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful promise to know that, yes, there is mercy and there is grace. Even after I got saved, even after I knew better, there's grace and there's mercy. If I will confess, he will forgive me. Ooh, if it had not been for God's grace and his mercy. Sabrina, we're going to dig into this a little bit more. We've got to take a very small break, but that gives you time to tell somebody we're still live right here on TCT Ask the Pastor. We'll be right back. Did you know TCT has a brand new app? That's right. You now have access to Christian television with one simple click. Watch TCT's exclusive live stream and on-demand programming. Cast to your smart TV. Share episodes with your friends. Never miss a moment of your favorite programs with pause and rewind. Enjoy TCT on all your favorite devices, whether at home or on the go. And just for signing up and downloading the new TCT app, we'll send you a great gift absolutely free. Selection will vary and supplies are limited, so don't wait another minute. Go to tct.tv, ways to watch, apps and devices to get started. Download the new TCT app today. You ask the questions and we provide the answers. On Ask the Pastor, we minister the Word of God as we receive your inquiries. It takes a great deal of time, effort, and finances to produce this quality Christian programming. Our production team at TCT works hard behind the scenes to produce these highly enriched programs. When you support TCT, we can continue to provide biblical Christian guidance to our viewers. Jim from Florida calls in with this question. What are some Bible verses that can help with depression? Your support can make a difference in the lives of many. Go to our website at tct.tv or call us at 1-800-232-9855. And you can text to give by sending TCT to 56512. Also, you can mail a contribution to P.O. Box 1010, Marion, Illinois, 62959. Thank you for partnering with TCT and Ask the Pastor. Your support is so important, and not only is it a blessing to what we do here at TCT, but when you sow seed, it blesses you back. That's right. You reap a harvest for sowing seed, and I want to remind all of you, you can do that. It's what keeps the gospel of Jesus Christ going around the world. Yes, yeah, some 60 million homes we are giving Jesus to. Give us a call today, 800 232 9855. Of course, you can write us at P.O. Box 1010 Marion, Illinois 62959. Just go to our website. All the information is on there. It's a secure site as well if you want to give tct.tv. Of course, you can text a love gift. Text the letters TCT to 56512. We have been on fire today. My goodness, your questions have been so on point and so fulfilling to dig into the Word of God and get these uh, answers out to you. And so many of you say, well, I've got one more I want to ask. That's right. Just email us at ask at tct.tv or you can type it in the comment section there on YouTube. That's right. YouTube is live as well. And we are receiving those questions. Now, right before we went to break, we were dealing with Sabrina's question. She's down in North Carolina. She said, if you have sinned after accepting Christ, can you be saved again? We heard from Pastor Charles. I want to hear from the rest of the pastors. Dr. Kathleen. Thank you, Sabrina, for that question. And it's a wonderful question. And I think we're referring to the scripture here. I'd like to read it in 1 John. It says here in verse 9, If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then the Old Testament talks about returning as a backslider. Yeah. And so you can come back. The Lord says he will heal you. I just want to encourage you. But you know, when you come back to the Lord, what's very, very important is that you get plugged in to a congregation, into a church, 
because you know what, it's just too easy. There's too many distractions out there. You know, I was just thinking the other day, this is a little off, but you know, when you think of all the television programs and all the internet and everything that we have today, there's a lot of distractions. Oh yeah. And so we need to get into the word. I wanna encourage you, find a prayer group. I mean, I have a prayer call that I'm on at just about every single night. And I get so much from that outside of what we do with our congregation and ministry. So I just want to encourage you, and I just want to say one really quick thing. I had a friend that backslid, and the Lord sent me all the way up north to her, to the fire department, and she happened to walk out the door right when I showed up in the middle of the country. And the only word I had for her was the Lord sent me all these miles just to tell you to come home. Mm. It's that simple. So Sabrina, just come home. Or if you know someone, it's as simple as that. Lord, I need you. I like that. I like that a lot. Just come home. Pastor David, what do you have to say to Sabrina? I think it's important that we understand or grasp the fact that God is stronger than we are. Oh, yes. uh, before the foundation of the world, he chose us for himself. And if he's accepted you, and you can tell that if he's accepted you, if you've confessed with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, you didn't do that on your own. He initiated that in you. And since he initiated that in you, he is able to keep you in spite of you, in spite of the fact that you've fallen. We are going to be celebrating the Easter weekend. And as we are celebrating Easter, as we are celebrating the risen Christ, we come to realize that he is the one that keeps us. Yes, we still sin, unfortunately, but hopefully we sin less. We're still sinners, but we sin less and less and less as we are being saved sanctified, as we are being changed, as we are continuing to be worked upon by the spirit of the living God so that one day we will be with him and be like he is. God has not lost you. You haven't lost him. You've just lost the enjoyment of being with him because your sin has blinded you to the benefit that he is one for you, hard one for you on the cross. Ah, Lord, my, it feels like Sunday morning in here. Feels like it's Resurrection Sunday already. Thank you for that, Pastor David. Pastor Mark, I know you're on oh, fire. Well, I am, and I, I just <laughs> love this question. You know, I want to I want to tell Sabrina, God loves you. Yes. God loves you. And I'm just going to go to some scripture real quick, and I want to read it. You know, in uh, I, I looked at my Romans Road that I have written up here, Romans Road to Salvation. I'm just going to turn to the third one. But God demonstrated his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, yeah. Christ died yeah. for us. And if we go back over here, I used the scripture a little earlier in uh, Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And I believe, Pastor, you just said that. And all are justified just as I've never sinned, freely by his grace through redemption that came by Jesus Christ. I, I wanted to, uh, Sabrina, listen, you didn't lose your salvation necessarily because you sinned, because we are all sinners. We know he loves us. Right. He sends only begotten son. The qualification, the qualification is this. Repent for the kingdom of God is near. It says that right here in Matthew 4, 17. Write these verses down you're hearing. Go to them and believe. It says, if you believe in your heart. Yes. And, and Pastor, you use this. This is out of Romans 10, 9. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart. Not in your head. Not had salvation. That doesn't get you in. But your heart, that your heart's been changed. Uh, and God raised him from the dead. You will be saved for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified again, just as I've never said. It is with your mouth you profess your faith and are saved. By faith you're saved through grace. He gave you the grace. He gives you the mercy. He gives you the faith to believe that the, what, the action on the cross paid for our sins. We did this a little earlier, past, present, and future. Yeah. The good news is you're recognizing the, that you need to repent. Mm -hmm. You repent, you get on your knees, you cry back out to God, Lord, help me, help me. I repent of my sin. And I would tell you, salvation, we're working it out in fear and trembling. I said it earlier, it's by the blood of Jesus, that sacrifice on the cross. That's what, what's coming up. Hallelujah. Good Friday is good because Sunday is coming. My Lord, my Lord. Now, see, you guys know I'm a runner. I almost took off running just then. Somebody needs to just type on YouTube right now, help me, help me, help me. Pastor Artie, please take it before I take off Absolutely. running. <laughs> I may follow you. Right. <laughs> well, Sabrina, I want to take you to 2 Corinthians 5. 517 first 
and it says, if any man or woman be in Christ, yes. he is a new creature. Hallelujah. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So if you're in Christ, you know, you have a new relationship. You're a brand new creature. You're not the old person that everybody said you are or you were or you thought you were. You're brand new. You've been born again. And you can't get born again again. Uh, and my brother here talked about 1 John uh, 1, 9, and that's for Christians. And it says if, if we sin, you know, we, uh, and if we confess our sin, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And what it comes down to is two things. It's a relationship and fellowship. Once you're born again, you have a new relationship with God. He becomes your father, you're a son or a daughter. Now, what happens is when we sin is we break our fellowship. The relationship is still intact, but the fellowship is, is not where it should be. If I have an argument with my wife, which happens every now and then, um, you know, our relationship is still intact. She's my wife. She'll always be my wife right. till the end of days. But our fellowship is not so good. It's, we call it intense fellowship. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> until one of us repents, then our fellowship is now restored. And the two comp the relationship and the fellowship now just brings a whole great time. Uh, my brother also whispered about the prodigal son. The prodigal son never lost his relationship with his father. He was always his son, even though he sinned against his father. But when, his, when he decided to repent, his father ran after him and put the ring on him and the robe on him. <laughs> And so the fellowship was now restored. He was welcomed back into his house and he had everything he had before. So Sabrina from North Carolina, I don't know if you're asking for a friend or if you're asking for yourself, but I just want to assure your salvation is secure. Hallelujah. You know, a sin does not break, take away your salvation. It doesn't remove your place in heaven. That's secure. He is faithful and just. You know, he'll never leave us nor forsake us. It takes a lot of, more than just one sin for God to forsake us. He'll never forsake us. He'll always be there for us. And, and you know, Romans chapter 8 says that uh, nothing will separate us from the love of God. So, Sabrina, just repent. Hallelujah. <laughs> Sweetheart, if you're watching, did you hear Pastor Artie? Last week was just intense fellowship. That's all that was. That's, that's all that was. <laughs> Thank you, Sabrina, for that question. What an amazing question. And it stirred us up right here on the set. Linda is on YouTube. Pastors, get your pens, get your Bibles. Linda said, my husband died suddenly and didn't attend a church. He would watch pastors on TV, but wouldn't attend church. Will he be welcomed by Jesus? Will he be welcomed by Jesus? Who wants to jump in on that first? I just, we're going to go out of order here just a minute. Who wants to jump in on that? Pastor Artie, looks like you're ready. Come Take on. it, why not? Go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, years ago, my grandfather had passed away, mm. and I was very um, upset because I didn't know if he accepted Christ or not. But he had been to church. He had read the Bible several times. He even asked me questions about it. And when he passed away, I just didn't have a, a good feeling that he, he accepted Christ and he was in heaven. I didn't know. But some, a pastor came up to me, this is many years ago, and said, listen, Artie, he says, you have no idea what God was doing to him in the very last minutes of his very last oh, breath. Wow. If God loves us so much that he won't even give us up in, his very, in our very last breath. He said, think about the thief on the cross. He said, on that very last day, when he said, just remember me, that's all he asks is just, just remember who I was, that I hung next to you. And Jesus said, I'll do far better than that. He says, because of this day, you shall be with me in paradise. So you just have no idea. I, I just know that when you walk into heaven, you'll be surprised who's there. Amen. <laughs> Pastor Charles, what do you have to say? Uh, wow, what a, what a testimony and, and what uh, exactly. I, I just spoke about this a few weeks ago um, and heading into Good Friday is, is, is even better um, when, when the two thieves on the cross, the one I would have ventured to say, they were both criminals. They were both guilty of their sin, guilty of what they had done. Jesus was the only one innocent and both of them scoffed at Jesus. Both of them, um, uh, the scripture at some, some point uh, suggested both of them, but one of them changed his mind. He said, don't you have any shame? <laughs> we are guilty of what we've done and you criticizing this man. He said, listen, remember me when you come into your kingdom. I would have ventured to say he probably didn't go to church or didn't go to anything, but he said, this day you'll be with me 
in paradise. And it's a beautiful thing. And we talk about the kingdom of God and how it all works. It's like, you know, religion will tell you certain things and uh, tradition will tell you certain things. But all we are, God knows our heart. He knows the intention of our heart. Whether he's in heaven or not, I can't speak to. But I, what I can say is, is if he knew Jesus, if he gave his life to the Lord, then, you know, yes, God will welcome him. He will welcome him if it, even if he never attended a church service. My Lord, I like that. Pastor uh, Kathleen, you, you are, are, uh, have dealt with so many experiences similar to this where God has shown you so many things through dreams and all, all types of things. I want you to just minister to Linda. Would you take a moment and do that? Thank you so much. Linda, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart Hallelujah. and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your steps. We just want to speak the peace of God over mm, you. Hallelujah. And we want to pray for you right now. Yes. Father, we thank you for Linda, that yes. she has called in and her heart is missing her mate, yes. her husband. And Lord, we thank you that you will give her peace. You will give her rest. She still has a life ahead of her, Lord. Yes. And as the pastor said, Lord, we don't know. They know the way. Jesus is so merciful. He's, his mercies are new every morning, and great is his faithfulness. Hallelujah. So, Lord, thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. And just we just speak peace over Linda from the top of her head to the sole of her feet. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Linda, I know you feel that because we feel it right here in the studio. God just met you right in the very room that you are in. Lift up your bowed down head. Yeah. Hallelujah. God is working it out. Thank you so much for talking with us, Linda. Uh, Nehemiah is on YouTube as well. I want you guys to really get ready. Matthew chapter 12, verse 40. That's where I need you guys to go immediately. Thank you so many of you are just being so consistent in watching us on YouTube. You're getting those questions in. And uh, it's an amazing thing because it shows how much truth and wisdom is in the Word of God. Well, Nehemiah said, well, I need some clarification. In light of Matthew chapter 12, verse 40, Jesus' own words, how could he have been crucified on a Friday and resurrected on the following Sunday? Pastor David, how could this have happened? Well, uh, because he's God. Uh, yes. that, that's, <laughs> you, you yes, know, uh, you're in Matthew, the to to I think to to get at the scripture, he uses Matthew uh, twelve twelve forty, and um, it, it's really interesting. The, let's go to the verse before: an evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And for Jonas was three days and three nights in the well's belly. They one time thought that that wasn't possible, but found out that it is scientifically oh, yes. possible. And so shall the son of man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. This was what was proclaimed by scripture that this would happen, that there would be the son of God who would who would die for the sins of the world, that one who died for the sins of the world would be raised again. It, it happened, and we believe it, uh, honestly, because the scripture says it. Yeah. But it's also something that has been uh, shown to be true historically. It's been shown to be true by over 500 witnesses. It's been shown to be true in so many different ways. And so how did it happen? I can't give you the perfect explanation except that I believe the word of God and the word of God is true. Yes. In, in Psalm 19, I'll, I'll do this quickly. Psalm 19, it, it's, it's just an amazing thing that it talks about this word of God. And it says the word of God, the law of the Lord is perfect converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. You embrace the word of God and he'll open your eyes to how this could be. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. 
Thank you, thank you. What a word. This is a perfect question for the week that we're in right now, Pastor Mark. Nehemiah's question, in light of Matthew chapter 12, verse 40, Jesus' own words, how could he have been crucified on a Friday and resurrected on the following Sunday? Well, Nehemiah, that's, that's a good question. I think, Pastor, you did a great job in answering it because there's a lot of mystery in things. And we start to recognize, and you read it, so I'm not going to go back over, but uh, I think initially we have to understand and recognize that when we look at Jonah, and I just preached out of Jonah a couple months back, and there was so much that uh, God showed me and was under, uh, that was covered by uh, our thoughts and uh, uh, the stretch of faith, that it had to come by way of revelation. And I believe as we read these scriptures, that the Holy Spirit it has to bring us to an understanding by faith. Mm -hmm. So by faith, listen, uh, we, if we can believe that Jonah was in a fish for three days and three nights in the belly of the well, and then Jesus is using this to describe how it's going to work with him, I believe he's taken us to the point that there's miracles happening, there's signs happening, there's things that we may not understand, but by that revelation the Holy Spirit reveals to us. As Pastor said, I, listen, I think there's issues when we understand how God's calendar is even different than ours. Uh, the Jews uh, would have gone by the moon, the the, line, the lunar calendar, where we have a uh, the sun calendar uh, uh, and, and the solar calendar. And we have to understand that the, not that things change, but they were on a different. They only had 30 days in a month. There's a lot of different things going on that I don't think any of us understand. Other than I believe this represents that the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus coming out of the tomb as the Holy Spirit raised him from the dead yes. is an absolute miracle. We have to believe by faith, just like we believe that Jonah was in that fish, in the belly of that fish. We believe that Jesus was in the belly of the earth, and God brought him out to us. Just Ooh, like that. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I think that's a perfect way to conclude our program today as we are in Holy Week, preparing to celebrate what God did. It is a faith thing. You've got to have faith to believe what happened. Call us, 800-232-9855. Write us. Let us know how we were a blessing, and be a blessing. Blessing to us, P.O. Box 1010, Marion, Illinois, 62959. Go to our website, tct.tv. Of course, we want you to text a love gift. We made it so convenient for you. Text the letters TCT to 56512. Can I thank our founders again, Dr. Garth and Tina Kuntz, 44 years. Somebody got healed today. Somebody got blessed today because of the work that they've been doing right here on TCT. Pastors, thank you so very much. Thank you for tuning in. I've been your host today, Brandon Hollis. We'll be back tomorrow with more Ask the Pastor. Ask the Pastor is a TCT Network production and is made possible by your financial gifts. If you have questions or comments, write Ask the Pastor, P.O. Box 1010, Marion, Illinois 62959, or email us at ask at tct.tv. Thanks for watching.